Hello, my name is Michaela Kling and I'm here with Abigail King and today we're presenting on research that we completed in our microbiology course in the fall of 2020. Antibiotics have started to become resistant to bacterial infections, which has caused a worldwide antibiotic crisis. This has occurred due to the overuse and misuse of these antibiotics and it has become worse over time. This has caused there to be less options of antibiotics, but there is new technology that investigates the comparison of new and known genomes to help determine its resistance factors. Along with our hypothesis, we were curious to see if undergraduates were able to find antibiotic producers on their campus. Our hypothesis was that the organisms found on California University of Pennsylvania's campus would be capable of producing antibiotics. To do this, we collected one gram of peat soil behind Frick Hall underneath some bushes and created zero dilutions from that sample. From the zero dilutions, we created spread plates to obtain single colonies to create master plates. Each lab group had their own master plate, where Abby and I worked with master plate one, as we'll describe a little bit later on. These master plates were then used to look at and complete a few different types of tests. First, we looked at the colony morphology of each of the isolates. Then we completed selective and differential media, where we worked with eosin methylene blue and mannitol salt agar. Finally, we completed spread patch plating where we actually looked for the antibiotic production of these isolates to see if any were antibiotic producers. We completed serial dilutions and ended up with a total of four agar plates, which is shown in the top picture. Our goal was to isolate single colonies and we needed these to create our master plate. We used the 10 to the negative four plate to calculate the colony forming unit or CFU, which was 1.5 times 10 to the six CFU per gram. So as I stated before, we did end up getting master plate one, which is shown in the second group of pictures. These are both of master plate one, just from different viewpoints because we could not go into lab due to remote learning. Master plate one had 12 isolates placed on the agar plates and all 12 actually grew. Some groups did not have all 12 isolates grow, but our plate did have all 12 of the isolates grow. Then we characterized them through the morphology of each of the isolates where we looked at the margin, color, surface texture, surface elevation, and shape. I do want to note, however, that it was a little bit difficult to identify some of these things, especially the surface elevation, since we did only get to work with the pictures and not go into lab and physically touch and move around the plates. As you can see, there was not much diversity within these isolates, and instead they're very similar to one another. So we had to complete a few more tests to determine the differences between the isolates and if any were antibiotic producers. We then used selective and differential medias that test for gram positive or negative bacteria and for carbohydrate metabolism. Our first test that we used was an eosin methylene blue plate, which is shown in the third row of pictures on the left. And this shows growth of gram-negative bacteria, and the purple coloration shows lactose fermentation. We did have a lot of growth on our EMB plate. The second plate that we completed was a mannitol salt agar plate, which is also in the third row of pictures on the right. And this shows growth of gram-positive bacteria. However, it is not a perfect test because it, it does not fully inhibit gram-negative bacteria. The yellow color on the plate shows mannitol fermenting and the red color shows non-mannitol fermenting. As you can see, most of our plate was yellow. 
We concluded that most of our isolates were gram negative and mannitol fermenting. However, that didn't give us an answer as to whether they are antibiotic producers, so we had to complete more tests. The next test that we completed was the antibiotic production where we completed patch plating. Patch plating is when you take a bacterial tester strain and you place that onto the agar first, and then you place the isolates on top of that. This layering effect allows the isolates to grow and even produce clearings if they're antibiotic producers. We screened against three different types of organisms, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Bacillus aureus, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, all shown in the bottom left picture. I do also want to note that all three plates did have the lawn effect, which can be seen in the bottom right picture. This picture though is a zoomed in version of our Staphylococcus epidermidis plate. We had two isolates that grew on the Staphylococcus epidermidis plate, and they were isolates 10 and 11. However, only isolate 11 produced a clearing. This clearing does show that it was positive for antibiotic production. More tests should be completed on isolate 10 to further see if it was an antibiotic producer for anything else or why it did not produce the clearing as isolate 11 did on the staff plate. There are a few future directions this research can take. One direction is to identify isolate 11's taxonomy and compare it to known producers. Another direction is to test the isolates against other strains to see if they are antibiotic producers against another bacteria. Lastly, we could test soil samples from a different location, whether that be another spot on Cal's campus, another campus in PA, or another location entirely. In conclusion, again, we did find an antibiotic producer bacteria in the one gram of peat soil sample we gathered. From the single colonies, we were able to create master plate one. Through these isolates on master plate one, we discovered that isolate 11 was an antibiotic producer against Staphylococcus epidermidis. As Abby stated, there are several other directions that can be completed to continue this work to fight this antibiotic crisis. We did also discover that undergraduate students are capable of finding antibiotic producers on their campus. This means that the antibiotic crisis can be fought with numbers worldwide by allowing classrooms to work and find potentially new antibiotic producers. Finally, our hypothesis was correct and was supported by the data we collected because the organism sampled at Cal U was found to be an antibiotic producer of Staphylococcus epidermidis shown through isolate 11.